Many people don't know that the ancient Maya people were even more advanced in engineering skills in many areas than we are today. But how were the mysterious Maya pyramids built? From very advanced complete construction process to the mind-boggling materials that were used for this process. And of course, amazing theories that scientists including Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson suggest that these last technologies were used to build the Maya pyramids. So how these historical and mysterious structures, Maya pyramids, were really built? Well, let's analyze the incredible construction process that was used. Construction of these pyramids was a grand project that required an extraordinary amount of manpower and resources. Scholars estimate that up to thousands of laborers could have been involved at different times, although the exact details of the labor force involved in the construction are not entirely clear. The construction of Maya pyramids was carried out by a workforce consisting of skilled laborers and artisans who were part of the Maya civilization. These workers were not slaves, but rather skilled craftsmen, architects, and laborers who were organized and supervised by the ruling elite. The construction of these impressive structures required a significant amount of manpower and coordination. Maya society was hierarchical, and the rulers, nobles, and priests held significant power. The rulers, in particular, had control over labor and resources, which they used to oversee the construction of monumental architecture like pyramids, temples, and palaces. The workforce involved in building pyramids likely included not only skilled stonemasons, but also laborers who helped with the transportation of materials, as well as individuals with expertise in engineering and mathematics to ensure the precise alignment of the structure with astronomical events. It is important to note that the construction process of Maya pyramids exemplifies the architectural genius, precision, and resilience of the ancient Maya civilization. Despite not having access to modern machinery or complex materials, they designed and built colossal structures that have withstood the ravages of time. The construction of these monumental structures was labor-intensive and complex, requiring meticulous planning, coordination, and the mobilization of considerable manpower. The initial stage of pyramid construction involved the quarrying of large blocks of limestone. Using materials made from stone, such as flint and obsidian, workers would cut blocks from the quarry face, a process that required considerable skill to ensure that the blocks were of a consistent size and shape. The size of the blocks could vary greatly, but it was common for them to weigh several tons. Transportation of these massive blocks from the quarries to the construction sites was a significant challenge especially considering that the mayor did not utilize beasts of burden or wheeled vehicles. It is believed that they most likely used a combination of sledges, rollers, and brute force for this task. The blocks would be dragged and rolled over logs until they reached the construction site, an undertaking that required a substantial workforce. Once at the site, the construction of the pyramid began with the creation of a solid foundation. This was usually done by filling a predetermined area with rubble or earth and then covering it with a layer of stucco to form a sturdy level base. Upon this foundation, the first tier of the pyramid or platform was constructed using the prepared limestone blocks. Simultaneously with the construction of the pyramid's body, a stairway was usually built leading from the base to the top of the structure. These stairways were more than mere access points. They were deeply symbolic, representing a path from the terrestrial world to the celestial realm. One remarkable feature of Maya pyramid construction was the practice of building new pyramids over existing ones. When a new ruler ascended, they would often construct a new pyramid over an older structure, completely encapsulating the previous building. This practice resulted in a Russian doll effect, with several layers of pyramids within each other, each representing different periods of construction and architectural styles. The finishing and decoration of Maya pyramids were pivotal steps in their construction, transforming these massive stone structures from mere architectural marvels into vibrant centers of cultural, religious, and social life. These final stages encompassed a wide range of techniques and materials, including stuccoing, painting, and carving, each adding a layer of complexity, beauty, and symbolism to the finished monuments. Following the completion of the structural components of the pyramids, the stucco finishing process began. This involved applying a thin layer of stucco over the rough, irregular surface of the limestone blocks. The stucco was often mixed with vegetable fibers or animal hair to increase its durability and reduce cracking. The wet stucco would be smoothed onto the stone, creating a uniform surface that was ideal for painting and carving. 
As the stucco dried, it hardened to create a robust and long-lasting surface. The next phase involved painting the stuccoed surfaces. The mayor developed a broad palette of vibrant colors derived from natural sources. For instance, reds and yellows were obtained from ochre, blues from azurite or indigo, and white from curling clay. Black, a color typically associated with death or the underworld in Maya culture, was derived from charcoal or burnt bones. Each color held symbolic significance within the Maya cosmology and was used thoughtfully and purposefully within the architectural context. Painting was often employed to enhance carved relief work or murals. These could range from simple geometric designs to incredibly detailed and intricate scenes depicting gods, rulers, mythological narratives, or historical events. The paint brought these carvings and murals to life, highlighting the depth and detail of the relief work. The process of carving into the stucco surface required a delicate touch and precise control. Using stone materials, artisans would chisel intricate designs into the wet stucco before it fully hardened. These designs often represented the powerful religious and cultural symbols of the Maya civilization. Intricate glyphs, representing the sophisticated written language of the Maya, were frequently incorporated into these designs providing valuable historical and cultural insights. The most prominent and complex carvings were typically reserved for the temple at the pyramid summit. This space was viewed as sacred and often held statues or effigies of gods and revered ancestors made from stucco, wood, or stone. Similarly, the stairs leading up the pyramid were often flanked by large stucco masks or statues representing deities or mythical creatures. Many pyramids were further adorned with architectural features such as roof combs, these were large, lattice-like structures placed atop the temples, which added to the pyramid's height and grandeur. They were often decorated with carvings of rulers or deities, further adding to the monument's symbolic richness. When it comes to materials, the mayor exhibited remarkable resourcefulness. The absence of metallurgy within the civilization meant they needed to use what was available to them, mainly stone. Flint, obsidian, and chert became the workhorses of mayor construction. These stone materials were used for everything from quarrying limestone blocks to carving intricate reliefs into the stuccoed surfaces of finished structures. Obsidian, in particular, was highly valued for its sharpness and durability, making it an ideal material for materials needed to shape and carve limestone. Wooden implements also played a crucial role in the pyramid construction process. Despite the relative scarcity of suitable timber, hardwoods like mahogany were shaped into levers and used in conjunction with earthen ramps to move and lift the heavy limestone blocks. The mechanical advantage offered by these simple machines enabled the builders to manipulate and position these large stones with a degree of precision that continues to astound modern observers. With that, rope and textiles crafted from plant fibers were instrumental in the construction process. Ropes made from the fibers of agave or hanequin plants would have been used for tasks like hauling stones. Simultaneously, woven textiles might have been employed as slings or sacks for carrying smaller materials. There is also a theory that the workers had to endure a grueling physical labor, often in harsh conditions and rugged terrain. They were responsible for tasks such as quarrying stones, hauling construction materials, digging trenches, and assembling the stones using various construction production techniques. The workers faced challenging circumstances, including limited resources, a lack of materials and machinery, and harsh weather conditions. Alternatively, various theories exist regarding the construction techniques used for the Maya pyramids. The most widely accepted theory about the construction of Maya pyramids centers on manual labor using simple materials. The Maya civilization lacked many of the technologies we associate with monumental architecture, such as metal materials, the wheel, and draft animals. According to this theory, the Maya built their pyramids using a workforce of hundreds or perhaps thousands of laborers who cut stone blocks from quarries using stone materials. These blocks were then transported to the construction site on sledges or rollers or simply carried by manpower. The blocks would then be laid in place, often with a mortar made from burned limestone. A more recent theory proposes that the Maya, like the ancient Egyptians, may have used a kind of geopolymer cement to build their pyramids. According to this theory, the mayor had the knowledge and ability to produce a concrete-like substance, a geopolymer cement, using locally available materials. This perspective challenges the traditional view of the mayor and their construction capabilities, suggesting a more technologically advanced society than previously thought. The term geopolymer was coined by French scientist 
Joseph Davidits in the 1970s. Geopolymers are a type of synthetic, inorganic mineral polymer that can be formed at room temperature from the reaction of aluminosilicates with an alkali solution. This process results in hard, stone-like material similar to natural rock, but that can be molded into precise shapes before it hardens. Another theory posits the use of counterweight systems, such as large sandbags or stones, to lift and position heavy stones. The use of counterweight systems theory in the construction of Maya pyramids significantly improved efficiency. With limited technological resources compared to modern times, the Maya had to rely on intelligent engineering techniques to move and place massive stone blocks. By employing counterweights and levers, they could effectively reduce the physical effort required to lift and position these colossal stones. The Maya engineers developed a complex systems of ropes, pulleys, and counterweights that allowed them to lift the stones to great heights with relative ease. By capitalizing on the principles of leverage and counterbalance, they minimized the workforce needed for construction and accelerated the pace of building these impressive structures. The efficiency gained through counterweight systems theory enabled the mayor to construct pyramids of varying sizes and complexities, from grand ceremonial pyramids to smaller structures dedicated to local deities. They could adapt their construction methods to create a diverse array of architectural marvels. Moreover, over the years, numerous theories about the construction of mayor pyramids have been postulated, with notable proponents such as Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson offering different perspectives. In the context of the Maya pyramids, Hancock's theories draw on his overarching concept of a lost civilization. According to Hancock, this civilization was highly advanced, predating known history, and was, at some point, wiped out by a global cataclysm. He suggests that this ancient civilization had knowledge and skills far surpassing those of civilizations in the historical era. Hancock argues that the evidence for this lost civilization lies in the archaeological ruins left behind around the world including the pyramids of Egypt, the monumental statues on Easter Island, and, relevant to this discussion, the Maya pyramids. According to Hancock, these monumental structures show signs of advanced technology and knowledge that the civilizations we attribute them to would not have possessed. The Maya pyramids, for instance, demonstrate a high level of precision in both architecture and astronomical alignment. They are oriented to celestial bodies and events, such as the solstices and equinoxes, with an accuracy that suggests a deep understanding of astronomy and mathematics. Hancock argues that this knowledge could not have been independently developed by the Maya civilization in isolation. He posits that either this lost civilization constructed the pyramids, or they passed on their knowledge to the Mayas before their demise. Hancock's theory is compelling and provocative, challenging us to rethink our understanding of human history. He suggests that the Maya and other ancient civilizations were not the primitive societies often portrayed, but were instead inheritors of an advanced, ancient knowledge. His lost civilization hypothesis pushes against the conventional boundaries of archaeology and history. On the other hand, Randall Carson is a prominent figure in the study of ancient civilizations, primarily known for his work in sacred geometry, archaeoastronomy, and ancient mythology. His perspective on the construction of the Maya pyramids draws heavily from these areas of expertise, crediting the sophisticated design and impressive architectural feats to the Maya civilization itself, without invoking a lost civilization as Graham Hancock does. Carlson's interest in the Maya pyramids revolves around their precision and the profound understanding of astronomy, mathematics, and geometry that they demonstrate. Unlike Hancock, he firmly attributes these qualities to the Maya people, seeing these monuments as testaments to their intellectual and cultural accomplishments. One of the key concepts in Carlson's perspective is sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is the idea that certain ratios and shapes have a special, often spiritual, significance. It's often associated with the architecture of religious structures and the design of religious art. Carlson posits that the Maya use sacred geometry in the construction of their pyramids, resulting in structures that reflect the underlying patterns of the natural world and cosmos. The Maya pyramids, according to Carlson, serve as an embodiment of the civilization's profound understanding of astronomical phenomena. The structure's alignments and design features often correlate with celestial events, such as the solstices and equinoxes. This alignment suggests a deep understanding of astronomical cycles, a knowledge that is reflected in the sophisticated Maya calendar system. Carlson's perspective presents the Maya civilization as highly sophisticated 
and capable of profound intellectual achievements. While he acknowledges that there are unanswered questions surrounding the source of Vermeer's detailed astronomical and geometric knowledge, he does not propose that it was handed down from a prehistoric advanced civilization. Rather, he suggests that the Maya people themselves were the originators of this knowledge. Although less controversial than Hancock's theories, Carlson's perspective is nonetheless provocative in its own right. By emphasizing the inherent genius of the Maya civilization, he challenges assumptions about the capabilities of ancient cultures and invites a deeper appreciation of their accomplishments. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.